Hi all. In this session, we are going to learn about the various scope rules followed in programming languages. The scope rules are different for static scoping, nested subroutine, declaration order, dynamic scoping, and modules. Let's see all these scope rules in detail. First one is the static scope rules. In static scoping, the scope of a variable or a method is determined at compile time. Typically, by finding a matching declaration in the most closely enclosing block. The simplest static scope rule is global scope. That is, if we declare a variable int a is equal to 10 as globally, then if we redefine int a is equal to 5 in a subfunction like d, then the value of a as 5 is only available in d. That is, the scope of the variable a as 5 is only in this particular function or in the particular stack frame called d. Outside of all this stack frame, the value is its global scope that is in a is equal to 10. Scope rules are designed so that we can only refer to variables that are alive. The variable must have been stored in the frame of a subroutine. Consider the execution of the following program and the referencing environment of this program. Here a is the main function. Inside a we are calling subfunctions like e, b, d and c. b and e have the static parent a that is it is statically linked with the main function a. c and d are statically linked with b that is c and d are called inside b subroutine or the b method. So the scope of the function or the method a is the entire lifetime or the entire execution time of this particular program because all other subfunctions are called inside A. As B and E has the static parent as A, then B and E is defined inside A. And inside B, we are calling two other subfunctions C and D. So its scope will be inside this particular region. As we all know that scope is the active textual region or the active binding time in a program referencing environment. So C and D have the active region till the execution of subfunction B finishes. E has the active execution region inside the submodule A likewise. Our subroutine C and D are nested in B. B is called as the static parent of C and D. And B and E is statically linked with A. A is called as the static parent of subfunction B and subfunction E. Remember, the scope of a local variable is limited to the subroutine in which it appears. For example, if you are declaring in A is equal to 10 as a global variable and we are redeclaring in A is equal to 5 in a subfunction called D, then the value of A as 5 is only available inside the subroutine D. That is, if we print the value of A outside the subfunction D, then its value will be always printed as 10. Its value will be printed as 5 only if we print the value of a inside the subfunction d. Other than that, all its value will be printed as 10. Next is nested subroutine scope. It is usually the concept of calling a function inside another function. Consider the example program. Function 1 is a method which will take two arguments in a and b. Inside the function 1, we are using a nested subroutine or you are calling a function inside another function and the inside function is named as square it will take a single argument and it will return the square of that particular variable that is if you are passing z as 5 then it will return 5 star 5 that is 25 as the returning value and the sub function or the nested subroutine ends here after that inside the main function we are returning the square of a plus square of b. So, while well, if you are passing 5 and 2 as a and b, then it will return the square of 5 as 25 plus square of 2 as 4. So, it will return 25 plus 4 as 29. It will return the value 29 in this function. The nested function's name is local to the block where it is defined. For example, in the following example, we are defining a nested function as square and we are coding it twice. That is square of a plus square of b. The scope rule in nested subroutine. The nested function can access all the variables of the containing function that are visible at the point of its definition. This is called as lexical scoping. 
closest nested scope root a variable declare has its scope in the current subroutine or in the current stack frame and any internally nested subroutines unless there is a definition with the same name more login let's understand this concept with the following example consider the program here it there is two functions function level 1 and function level 2 function level 2 is called inside function level 1 so it is nested subroutine in function level 1 we are declaring a variable x equal to 10 so a stack frame is created for the function level 1 and there is a variable named as x and its value is initialized as 10 and the next statement is we are calling a subroutine or a nested sub function named as function level 2 so again a new stack frame is created and inside the function level 2 we are again redefining a variable with the same name as x and we are initializing it as 20 so in the stack frame of function level 2 x is declared and its value is initialized as 20 and some code is written here and the end of the inner function that is the end of function level 2 so at this current point of time if we print the value of x it will show 20 because currently the frame pointer is pointing to function level 2 so if we try to print the value of x in the current activation record the value of x equal to 20 that is why the scope of x equal to 20 is shown only till this region that is in the definition of function level 2 till the end of function 2 till that period x value will be 20 other than that in all other regions the x value will be 10 that is if you try to print the value of x equal to 10 that is outside the function level 1 then its value will be x equal to 10 because after the termination of function level 2 that is after seeing this particular closing bracket the current stack frame is cleared so x equal to 20 will be cleared then there will be only one value that is x equal to 10 so theoretically the scope of x equal to 10 is during the entire execution of this particular program but inside this subroutine we are redefining the value of x as 20 so the continuous scope is broken and there is a new scope for x which is as 20 and it will be active only till the execution of this level 2 function so this gap in the scope of the main variable is called as a hole a name to object binding that is hidden by a nested declaration of the same name is said to be a hole in its scope that is x is equal to 10 having the entire scope in this program but during this execution there is a redefinition that is a nested declaration with the same name that is with the same variable name as x and we are redefining it as 20 so there is a hole in this particular scope consider the same code in the right hand side here we are again writing a function level 1 and inside the function level 1 we are declaring a variable x as 10 so a stack frame is created for function level 1 and x equal to 10 is defined and we are calling a function level 2 and inside function level 2 there is no redeclaration for x value so the scope of x will be continuous and it is the entire lifetime of the execution of this particular program so there is no hole in this execution as there is no redeclaration of x in the subroutine so a hole is the gap in the lifetime of a particular variable when there is a redeclaration of that variable in the subroutine next is declaration order one of the challenging question in programming language design is whether we can use a variable in the program before it is declaring early languages like alcohol 16 list it is mandatory to appear all the declarations in the beginning languages like pascal uses the principle that names must be declared before it is used in c language also we have to declare the variable before it should be used the simplest approach is no declaration order which is followed in modular 3 language whether the scope of a declaration is in the entire block irrespective of the declaration order but most of the languages like c cpp java etc we have to declare the variable before it is used for the first time next is dynamic scope scope cannot be determined until runtime typically by following stack frames until a matching declaration is found 
the implementation of dynamic scope can be defined as follow whenever a subroutine is called its local variables are pushed on a stack with their name to object binding when a reference to a variable is made the stack is searched from top down for the variable names to object binding after the subroutine returns the bindings of the local variables are pop we have already seen this consider the program in the main function we are declaring two variables n1 n2 so this n1 and n2 is pushed into the stack frame and we are calling a sub function or a local function called a swap of n1 comma n2 so the new stack frame with the name swap is created and the local variables in n1 and in n2 are pushed into the stack frame of swap and we are declaring a variable called temp that temp is also pushed into the stack frame after the execution of this sub function this swap stack frame will be cleared or pop next is scope rules in modules software industry follows modular programming though it uses divide and conquer principle that means solving a large task with simpler task module can be usually classes that is a unit of data and functions class is a way to bind data and functions into a single unit as we all know this concept in object oriented programming modules are encapsulated in such a way that objects inside are visible to each other objects on the inside are not visible to the outside unless it is explicitly imported objects outside are not visible to the inside unless it is explicitly imported we are achieving all these visibility properties using the visibility mode called private public and protected so the scope is defined using the visibility modes in case of modules as we all know that if the scope is defined as public or the visibility mode is defined as public then all the variables and functions can be accessed anywhere in the program if we are declaring the scope or the visibility mode as private then all the variables and functions can be accessed only inside that current particular class if we are declaring the scope as protected then only that particular class and its child classes can access that particular variable or function so this is how the scope of a class or object is defined inside the concept of modular programming thank you